Hi everyone, today I wanted to share a little Easter treat template for you. It's a super simple basket and you can change it up for um, a couple different styles of basket. So I thought it'd be a fun thing to share. Um, this is one we did at Stamp Camp and it was in the, <laughs> it's in my little bin. It got a little messed up. Fix it real quick. Uh, this is one we did at Stamp Camp. It's super fun and easy and you can put um, I gave everybody some Lindor eggs. Um, you can put all kinds of different little candies in there. And it's really sweet. You put that out on your desk and fill it with some jelly beans or little treats and people can come by your desk and you know, if you're at work or, yeah, it's just a little cute little basket. Nice party or table favor for Easter too. Um, anyway, so I thought I would share that. And this basket is, uh, this is an old one that I made a long time ago. This stamp set is no longer, available and I thought I would share it because it's actually the same template so they look very different but it's the same exact this paper is the same exact size and everything so I'm going to show you how that can be <laughs> so it's really simple and it's called the 246 basket so you've got a 6 by 6 piece of cardstock and you're going to score it at 2 and four, and then you cut it six, but I've already done it. And then you're gonna turn it and do the same thing. Two and four. Okay, then all you need to do is trim a couple flaps. So you're gonna grab your snips And there. Okay, so you've got your your basic basket. Now the easiest one is this one, and it actually gives you more space to put things in there. So it's actually the larger of the two. They're both the same, they're both two, four, six. But this one ends up being larger because it's kind of flayed out a little bit. So all you need to do here is you can decorate it in many different ways. Now what I did, and I already pre-did this, is I rounded the edges. And then that makes each of these squares two inches. So I cut some pieces of cardstock. This is one and three quarters. And then you can attach these to kind of give it more of a basket feel. Isn't that a fun die? This is uh, in the mini and it's, oh, I think it's called rattan. Let me make sure. Cane weave, see it's a good thing I checked. Cane weave 3D embossing folder. And it's really fun and it kind of gives that little woven look to it. And all you're gonna do is attach these to each side. I'll do that on fast forward. Okay, and then you're just going to bring these forward and kind of meet these two in the middle and punch a hole or glue. If you have little brads, you can punch a hole and use a brad, which is what we did at Stamp Camp. Now, it depends on your hole puncher, if you can get through all three of those. Well, actually, it's uh, five layers of cardstock at once. With a regular hole puncher, probably not. Does anybody remember this guy? This giant crocodile? <laughs> I still have mine, so I'm going to be able to get through all of those at one time. You want to do make sure that you're going through all of them. There we go. Let me get a brad. match up this side. Now I still need a handle so I'm only temporarily 
putting these brads here. Let me do my handle. All right, so I just use a scrap. I think this one's probably half of an inch or three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch by about, let's see, six. Yeah, I just grabbed scraps from my, from my um, cardstock package. And I'm gonna cut a hole in each of those. And go through the bread. Now you can put it in the middle here or inside, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna fill mine with some grasses so it's gonna cover the ends. There is your little basket, 246 basket. Now, this version is the same, I'll show you the back, with a couple of variations. So let me show you how to make this one. Okay, I had to pause my video. My kids are on spring break, so they um, are home doing things and asking questions. <laughs> so anyway, I paused. So I'm gonna start over again. I need this piece, it's again, it's scored at two and four. And then here's our six, so two, four, six, and then two and four. So we have this like checkerboard pattern, which you probably can't see very well. There we go. And then you're gonna cut flaps. Like so. Okay, now to get our cute little picnic basket look here. We're going to have to cut some more flaps and then we're going to cut a triangle out of our centerpiece. So I'm going to grab a pencil and we are going to, I like this grid paper so I can go right in here. I know this square is two inches so if I put it on my grid paper I can at the one inch mark make a little mark here and same for the bottom. Okay, and then I can cut from that mark to the corner. So then we have to also cut these squares into three strips. So you can't really divide two inches into three sections super cleanly, at least not in centimeters and inches and eighths and all that sort of thing. So what I do is I do five eighths from either side, which leaves the center one at like six eighths, but that's okay. Um, I, I can live with the middle one being a different size. So that's what I do. So I'm gonna go to my grid paper down here that has eight measurements on it. And I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five from each side. One, two, three, four, five, eighths. And I'm gonna do the same over here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I know you probably, if you watch a lot of demonstrator videos, you see this grid paper. This is available for customers too. If you look in the tool section, one, two, three, four, five. It's nice because it gives a nice cushion for stamping on. You know how sometimes with photopolymer stamps, you kind of need the cushion, whereas the rubber stamps kind of have cushion built in. Anyway, it's really nice to have this grid paper and I really like it. Okay, so now we're gonna cut from this little line to our score line, not all the way across. So I will put that little pencil mark in the track and go to the score line, almost. I'll lift it up and finish it. Did I go all over the score line? Yeah, okay. So let's do this one to the score line.
the score line. Lift it. And one more. Okay, so now we have this like weird shape thing. All right, now how we make this into our basket is we're going to fold these little flaps inward. Let's kind of get our scores going. Okay, we're gonna fold them inward, kind of crossing over each other. So I put this one in first, and then this one, 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 until you get them flat. So you want the picnic basket to be flat. So get all your little, all your little um, pieces in there, like so. And the triangle is going to stick above, so you're going to cut that off. All right, now these just get glued down. So while you're doing this, you can um, get out your little glue. And the liquid glue is nice because it stays wet for a second. And you can play around with it until you get it how you want it. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of hold it for a minute. Oops. There we go. I'm gonna hold it for a minute so you can kind of see how that looks. Oh, and I didn't want that flap to be sticking out. Sometimes you can, if you don't, if it's easier, just you can cut that off. Um, but we are gonna cover this whole kind of convergence here with a circle so don't worry too much about it so it just takes a second for that glue to kind of set up and let's do the same on this side and tuck them under until they're nice and flat across the top I'm gonna cut off the top of that triangle and let's see, if I had done this in the right order, I wouldn't have so many of these showing. So let me kind of fix that a little bit. Cut those down like so. I'm gonna hold them for just a second. And now I'm gonna get a circle punch. Or if you have circle dies, either one. I've got a one-inch circle punch. I'm just gonna take a little bit of scrap. Oh my god, smaller scrap. Let me use that. I love using my little scraps. Probably you do too. <laughs> okay. So now you're just going to fold this in half. And we're going to glue it. Make sure nothing's sticking over because we want it to be nice and flat. Just kind of cleaning it up a little bit. I'm gonna put that right on top and hold. Same thing with this side and hold. There. 
Okay, now I like this little ribbon detail and I'm gonna show you how to do that. You're gonna to wanna to grab your tear tape and it's easiest to just start at one of the ends and I like it in my hand like this and just go around. Okay, we do have to put our handles on. I like to put my handles on before the ribbon because then it kind of cleans up all that inside detail. So let's do that. I'm gonna grab another scrap, but I'm gonna cut this in half. Let's see. Is this an inch? Yeah, so I'm gonna cut two half inch strips, about six inches long. Let's do that first. And then we're gonna go ahead and add little holes. I'm gonna use my tiny hole punch this time because I'm not going through six layers. <laughs> my little handheld. I probably should have done this before I put that tear tape down, but we'll see if that matters. So your basket can have one handle, two handles. I wanted this one to be like a two-handle picnic basket. It's because I have one similar to this in my basement that's like a picnic basket. It has a lid though, which probably can be done in paper as well. That is a lot more work. And then you can't see the cuteness inside the little candy that you're putting. Come on. Okay, so there's our basket. Now we're gonna add that ribbon. Now it's gonna be harder for me to take this tear tape thingy off. That was silly of me, so don't do that. Let's see if I can still get it. Of course it starts underneath. All right, that was really silly of me, but you know what? That's because I'm distracted today. I've got children trying to make their own scrambled eggs in the kitchen. <laughs> they're old enough to do it, but you know, they have home ec in school, so then they think they're gourmet chefs and they, you know, start burning butter and <laughs> all that good stuff. All right. So if you do this, put your tear tape on after you have already got these little handles in there. There, and it's not, I didn't undo it under there so my, my uh, handle can still go free. Well, I think I might leave it that way. All right, anyway, let's put the ribbon in. So I like this little, um, any kind of ribbon that you have, little lacy trim. I think there's a current lacy trim. This is an older one. And I'm gonna start in one corner and I want the little rough ball to stick up. So because I didn't take the tear tape off in the center, maybe I'll put a little bit there so that it stays a tiny bit. A little rectangle's worth in the center. All right, people. <laughs> All right, my stamping friends. You are like watching this and thinking, Beth, you're losing your mind. And you might be right. And I'm sorry. I wanted to share the two ways to do it. But I'm losing my mind. I'm just going to take the tear tape. Instead of putting more, because it's hard to put more on top of this, like, you know, this um, 
waxy or what is it? Because so, it's supposed to not stick to that because that's on the roll, right? So my brain wasn't working. So I'm just going to tear it off from the center. So you know how I had the tear tape going under? I'm going to leave it so that the handles can still move freely. But I'm just taking this covering, this backing off of the center so that I can stick my ribbon down. All right, so when you make this, leave a gap in your tear tape for your ribbon so you don't have to go through this insanity that I am going through. And I apologize. I should stop the video and do it over again, but as I said, my kids are home from spring break, so the second one might not have gone any, any better. All right, so I'm just pressing and pressing and pressing that down, covering up that tear tape. Yeah, let's go inside there. Pressing and pressing. Getting it into the corners. Pressing and pressing until I get to the corner and then I will trim. Ta -da! Now isn't that lace detail so cute? I think it is. I think that lace detail kind of adds it, and the one in my basement has lace detail. <laughs> so that's why this one has to have lace detail. Okay. Now let's add a little tag. And what we did at Stamp Camp is I wanted to show how easy to make a little tag just with some punches that you have. So what we did is we punched out this one, which is... called the decorative circle and then we also punched out another piece of this with the same uh, die or same punch but this time we um, used a little strip of designer series paper so it kind of ends makes a little little flower field right at the bottom I need two of these Top scallop, I'm going to put a little hole. And a bunny. This is from the same designer paper. It's called Country Lane or Country Bouquet, Country Gingham. Oh. Country Gingham. Sorry. I'm saying sorry a lot today. <laughs> Hopefully you like the basket. That's what matters. If you like the little basket and give it a go. I actually made it several years ago and I probably I made them separately so there's a video for them separately but I thought it would be cute for you to know that they're the same exact template so that you can change it up any way you want and you can make it out of designer series paper too it doesn't have to be. I'm using crumb cake to kind of look like a you know like a brown basket but you can use fun florally paper too. I made one once in yellow. Um, probably a video on that in my uh, collection. So then all you're going to do here is you're going to tie your ribbon and you can kind of go through your ribbon collection and see what you have. And tie. I was going to use this blue but now I don't know that I will because you don't see the blue all that often. But you're just going to tie a bow around the edge and add this little tag with a piece of white baker's twine and I have a tip for how to get that white baker's twine underneath that bow so I'm going to show you that real quick and end the video all right so I'm going to grab some of this let's see where's my other basket here I didn't want to use this white on this because the <laughs> because my uh, lace is ivory, so I'm just gonna tie a bow. I love this fabric. I love the linen look of it. I just don't love um, the knot that it makes on the thicker. That's my problem. The thicker band. Like if my 
handle had been thinner, maybe I would like it better. But I want to show you a trick for getting that um, tag on there. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll play around with ribbons later. <laughs> so I'm just going to take a little bit of Baker's Twine, and I'm going to take a flosser, a dental flosser. And maybe some of you have these. If you have kids with braces like I do, you have these anyway. But if you don't, go into the... Um, dental aisle and you'll find a little package of these dental flosses and let me see if I can find the package so you can see what it looks like. They come like this in a little box. It says gum, this brand, and you just need one and you're going to use it to thread your baker's twine. So I just need a little strip of baker's twine and I'm going to slip it through the little loop there and put this tip this little skinny part through the hole and go around my bow and pull up and it'll take this little ribbon with it. And then you just tie however you want. And that's how you thread and that you can use that if you're ever threading um, buttons for, you know, we used to have a lot of times we put buttons on our projects. We haven't done that in a while. Um, I don't think I've seen a button for sale in several years. New catalog comes out in a couple days. Maybe it'll have buttons. All right, so now I've got my little tag on there. And I'm going to fluff up my bow and all done. There you go. Then when you put the grass in here, it's going to kind of finish it off. Here's this one. So that you don't see the inside uh, edges and everything. Although that lace does kind of clean up. I don't know if you can see. The lace kind of cleans up the edges on the inside. So that's this version. And this version. Which one do you like? Let me know in the comments. And I know this video was wonky and I was a little distracted. <laughs> But they're not normally, so hopefully you'll check out some of my other videos. Uh, I hope you'll subscribe and come back again. Thank you. Bye.